10 point AccuSlide crank system is available on all of 10 points mid and upper end modes. It's been around for a few years and it has a couple different variants. The older model, which is currently being used on all of their mid and kind of upper, upper end bows, has been around for a while. The new style is pretty much the same exact system except it has a heavier poundage brake on it for the higher pound and higher speed bows like the Nitro. The actual physical operation of these are identical in every step except for the last step where you're disengaging the brake. First thing to do is to identify which brake system you have. It's actually fairly simple. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to identify which brake model you have and then we're going to go through the operation of both systems so you know how to correctly cock and decock your bow. The two different brake systems on the AccuSlides are fairly easy to identify. The older model system has a short collar on the chrome knob that you're going to install the crank handle on and has a fair amount of these knurls all the way around it to make it easy to grab a hold of when you're adjusting the brake. The new style one has a much longer collar on it and doesn't have as many knurls. That's pretty much the difference between them visually and the only reason you need to make sure you know which one you're dealing with is how many turns you have to back crank the unit after it's been cocked. All the AccuSlides have very similar features that operate the unit itself. On all the bows you're going to find that they're going to have a chrome brake knob here that will be where you're going to physically attach the crank handle to operate the unit. It's also going to have the safety on the right hand side. You're going to want to start off in fire. It's very important you start off in fire, it latches the bow correctly, and when you latch it will automatically go back into safe. It's also going to have the silver knobs here, there's one on each side and they are linked. And what they're doing is if you can actually look inside that hole, it's a pair of hooks that are hooking on to the steel bar that keeps the carrier back in its position. Another feature that it does have is this bar here that is nothing more than a guide bar so you can guide it up and down the rail and not allow the unit to freewheel. The third feature is this button right here. And this little black button on the bottom does nothing but engage the gears inside the unit to stop the gears from turning so you can engage and disengage the brake without backwinding. I'll go more into that later. But these are the basic features you're going to have on all of these bows that allow you to operate it correctly. To operate the AccuSlide is fairly simple. Currently the bow is set up as though we had just taken a shot. The brake system is disengaged, the bow is in a fire position, and the carry itself is latched back on the hooks. So what we want to do is we want to start off by sliding the latch down and attaching it to the string. To do that you need to take it off the pins. So what you want to do is push forward onto the silver knobs on either side of the trigger housing while holding on to the carrier slide and then slide it down the length of the rail and attach it on the string. These bows have a dry fire bar, a spring loaded bar in front to catch the string in case you forget to load an arrow. Um, you don't want to hook it just on there. If you do, you're going to be pulling it back on the string and it'll jam up up top. You can just simply back crank and let it back down, but because of the angle of pressure on the bottom of the front of the trigger housing, it becomes harder to do. So the trick here is when you're pushing this down, watch your safety. Do not listen for any clicks. Watch the safety. When it is latched fully on the string, the safety will automatically go from fire to safe. And move back into safe. Now the fingers are actually holding the string back it's latched, ready to crank up. At this point, take your crank handle, insert it into the crank knob in the back, and you start cranking clockwise. You're going to start taking up the slack and cranking up the bow. Because in the process of cranking it clockwise, you've engaged the brake. At any point in time, you can let go of the handle, and it won't go anywhere. Because the brake works in both directions, you could back crank it at any point in time and it won't go anywhere, hence the safe decocking. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to crank the carrier back 
until the pins on the carrier latch on these hooks. And you will hear the click with them latching. Once you get them latched onto the hooks, stop cranking. It is all the way back. However, as you notice, I'm able to move these levers. It's not resting on the pins. So now what you want to do is you want to back crank the bow two turns to allow the carrier to settle down the pins. Right now, the carrier is sitting jammed up against the bottom of the scope rail and the entire system is pulled back. So we run counterclockwise two turns. That now has the gap in there and it's settled in the pins and you're not able to move that lever anymore. It did settle everything down for repetitive shot. However, it did not fully disengage the brake. On the older model systems, put your thumb up top, hold on to the button I had indicated earlier, and back crank one more full turn. That allows you to disengage the brake. So the process is bring it back to the latches, back crank twice, hold the button, back crank one more turn. Now try to load and arrow and shoot. The new style system works exactly the same. You crank it back until it latches onto the hooks, back crank twice, put your thumb on top, finger on the button, and then you back crank half a turn, not a full turn. That is the only difference. The new style system does not need to be turned one full turn, it's only half a turn. To decock your bow is fairly simple. Pull out your arrow at the end of the day, and you have exactly what we have here. Bow that is cocked, on safe, latched onto the pins, with the brake disengaged. Take your left thumb and put it onto the left side silver latch, with forward pressure as though you're trying to push it to the front of the bow. Gentle forward pressure, you don't need to put a lot of pressure. Hold that forward pressure, insert the crank handle into the crank knob, and you start cranking forward as though you're cocking the bow. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be pulling that carrier back until it releases off those pins, and then you can back crank the entire assembly down. So, crank forward, you'll take up the slack in the system, it'll engage the brake, and you just go slow just until it releases those pins and the lever can be pushed forward. At this point, back crank the bow down. Once it's past the pins, you can let your thumb off. And you just safely back crank it down to the bottom. Most bows at the end of the day, you're going to leave them just like this, latched on the string, relaxed, sitting at the front, ready to be cocked the next time you're going to go out hunting. Perfectly acceptable. The trick here, though, is you want to take up the slack in the strap. If there's a ton of slack in the strap like this, as you're cranking forward and back, the teeth and the gears can chew up the strap itself. So once it's down at the bottom, crank it forward just enough you have a little bit of tension, take up the slack, ready to put away in your case. The reverse draw model crossbows have one additional feature. Because when the latch is at rest, the brush kind of hangs out here and can be damaged or knocked, you can release it from the string once the bow is decocked and it's on relaxed. On your crank handle, you're going to find a metal pin that you can fold out. This pin, you'll end up putting through a hole in the bottom. It'll basically bump the trigger and release it. To do this, put the bow into fire, hold the trigger just off of the string, and the hole that's right in front of the stock, push the pin up, bumps the bottom of the trigger, push down the dry fire, and you can slide the assembly completely off of the string. Occasionally, when back cranking, the crank systems after you've brought it back onto the latch you go to back crank it you do your two turns when you hold that button you get that clicking noise and you haven't got necessarily gotten all the way around to either the full half or one turn it's not a problem what happens is is that depending on the condition of the brake pad and how tight everything is sometimes just back cranking two turns and not having to do that additional one turn or half turn isn't even necessary. So what's happening here, that bumping noise, is you're bouncing off the button at the bottom on the gear and the teeth of the crank. So I'm going to show you exactly what's happening inside here so you know it's not a problem.
With the side cover of the crossbow removed, you can see the entire gear crank and strap assembly. When you're going to back crank it after you've brought it back onto the pins, as you're back cranking, the gears to the crank system are turning as well. That's allowing slack to come into the strap, allowing the entire gear assembly to settle down on the pins. Sometimes there's enough pressure that you can disengage the brake as you're back cranking. Not all the time, but every now and then. The way you can tell if you've disengaged the brake is by holding on to that button, which is down at the bottom. And all it is is literally just a piece of plastic with a couple of teeth that bite into these gear teeth. And it holds the gear from turning while you're turning the brake itself without adding undue slack in the strap. Once you fully have disengaged the brake, if you continue back cranking, you'll make a clunking noise, which is the teeth hopping off of the button. You'll actually feel the button bouncing as you're turning this. Stop cranking at that point. It won't hurt anything, but it will chew down the plastic on the teeth. But once you back crank to the point where you're here in that chunk, you fully disengage the brake. That's as far as you need to go. If you happen to have one of the bows, that back cranking twice disengages the brake. You don't need to go any further. If not, if the brake is not fully disengaged, hold on to that button and back crank it half turn on the new style, one turn on the older.